I'm Dr. P and we're going to talk about erection problems as in erectile dysfunction, what you need to know, what causes erectile dysfunction and how to actually fix this problem. Erectile dysfunction is a common problem among men, especially over the age of 40, and like premature ejaculation, can be a hidden problem. But there has been a change in the perception of erectile dysfunction, with some of the prescribed medication now freely available over the counter, and this is ideal for men who are too embarrassed to see the doctor. I mean, the plus side is the easy accessibility of this medication over the counter, but the downside is the potential misuse of these drugs, especially in young men or even teenagers who do not actually have erectile dysfunction, but see these drugs more as a performance enhancer recreational drug. Also beware of counterfeit and rip-off black market versions, which advertised as, you know, satisfy your partner for longer, have longer and stronger erections, all fair enough, but a lot of these drugs have not been tested and it don't actually address the root cause of this problem. I mean, we live in a world where the pressure is on to look our best, to do our best, and to be our best in all facets of life, and how much more in the bedroom where men feel that their manhood and masculinity is being judged, sadly, by their bedroom performances. Erectile dysfunction is much deeper than just popping the blue pill, and I'll explain why. You can also check out my video on choosing the best treatments for erectile dysfunction. So let's start with the definition of erectile dysfunction. This is basically the consistent inability of the man to get or hold an erection which is strong or long enough to achieve satisfactory sexual intercourse. I mean, I'll not bore you with the scientific details, but why not? I mean, achieving an erection is a complex process that involves several neurotransmitters that send signals from the brain to the penis. And this is following sexual stimulation, which then leads to blood filling up in the arteries of the penis, the smooth muscles become relaxed and the penis becomes erect. When this stops happening as well as it should, or not at all, then it's classed as erectile dysfunction. And it's also an early warning sign that there is something potentially serious going on in the body. So rather than just buying these pills online, you really should be speaking to your doctor first. I mean, we have several risk factors that can cause erectile dysfunction and other factors that can directly cause erectile dysfunction. And like I said, having erectile dysfunction is a warning sign, if, for example, a present or future heart disease or stroke. So you find that the risk factors for heart disease are similar to the risk factors for erectile dysfunction. So for example, obesity. I mean, not only does obesity increase your risk of diabetes and other conditions that cause erectile dysfunction, but it can also cause low testosterone and depression. Diabetes. If you have high blood sugars over a long period of time, that can lead to damage in the arteries of the penis and the nerves as well which means that you might have difficulty getting an erection as a result of reduced blood flow to the penis. With high cholesterol, you get what we call these lipid plaques that are deposited in the arteries of the penis. And if these lipid plaques are not dealt with on time, they actually become hard like cement, so difficult to get rid of, which means there's again reduced blood flow to the penis. The arteries become hard, which means that they do not dilate, so therefore you cannot get an erection. And this is also a sign that there might be lipid plaques elsewhere, such as in the carotid arteries that lead to the brain, as well as in the arteries of the heart. Smoking is another factor that reduces blood flow to the arteries and can encourage the deposition of lipid plaques in the arteries. Lack of exercise, as we know, exercise helps to increase blood flow. It burns down the fat, you get weight loss. It also breaks down the lipid plaques and exercise helps to reduce your blood sugar levels. So lack of exercise means a reverse of all these factors, which then causes erectile dysfunction. With high blood pressure, imagine that your heart has to pump blood at a high pressure all the time. This is not sustainable, which can also cause damage to the smooth muscle of the penis. Now, let's not forget about low testosterone. Low testosterone is an important factor in erectile dysfunction. It can cause a low sex drive, and it's also linked with other conditions like type two diabetes and obesity. So if we look at other conditions like spinal cord injuries, damage to the brain, back pain, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, thyroid problems, as well as several other factors that can cause erectile dysfunction. Then you also have medications such as your blood pressure medications, for instance, which are meant to reduce your low blood pressure, but they have side effects of causing erectile dysfunction. However, you do need to be on these blood pressure tablets as the benefits outweigh the risks because high blood pressure can also cause erectile dysfunction. So it's worth speaking to your GP who can now put you on a different version of a blood pressure tablet that's less likely to cause erectile dysfunction. Also, antidepressants that help with anxiety and depression can also cause erectile dysfunction because they reduce your sexual libido as a side effect of the medication. Finasteride, known for hair loss, can also cause erectile dysfunction as it reduces the free testosterone in the body. However, the effect of finasteride can be reversed after stopping the drug. Then you also have recreational drugs like cocaine, marijuana, 
as well as anabolic steroids that are used by athletes and bodybuilders, as well as drinking too much alcohol. Then you've got cancer treatments like radiotherapy for prostate cancer, or surgery to the prostate, bladder or bowel, which can damage the nerves and cause erectile dysfunction. You find that in the majority of young men, especially those under the age of 40, there tends to be no medical problem and a lot of it is actually psychological. For example, watching porn, depression, stress, anxiety, relationship difficulties, and even performance anxiety during a relationship can all lead to erectile dysfunction. I mean, I do get a lot of teenagers as young as 15 year olds asking for Viagra. And really at that age, I would normally advise that you should be focusing on your studies. But even with these young teenagers as well as young men, one of the questions I do tend to ask is what are you watching? And in most cases, the answer is they're usually watching excess porn or they're masturbating or they're in other relationships apart from their partners. Also, you have to remember that you have to have a sexual desire towards your partner. Being physically attracted to your partner is very important for erection. Other factors like stress to do with the mortgage payments, you know, bills, school fees for the kids can also cause erectile dysfunction. If you are still getting early morning erection, then that's usually good news because it's most likely to be a psychological problem. But if you have no early morning erection whatsoever, then this could be an organic cause, which might be due to damage to the nerves, the blood vessels, or smooth muscle, which can be irreversible in some cases. Also, if you lose your erection suddenly, then this is most likely to be psychological, as opposed to if you lose your erection gradually, which might be due to a medical problem. But do remember, you can have a combination of both medical and psychological factors happening at the same time. So this is why you should not just buy over-the-counter drugs and you should see a doctor as these problems might need investigating further. So your doctor would want to check your cardiovascular examination, listen to your heart, check your blood pressure, as well as examine your genitals for conditions like Peyronie's disease, which is abnormal curvature of the penis, checking the size of your testicles, if they're small, if they're undescended. And to remember, small testicles can occur at birth and it can also be due to taking anabolic steroids which means not enough testosterone is being produced. Also, you might need a prostate check, which is usually done in men who present with urinary symptoms, such as reduced stream or increased frequency of urine. So depending on a suspected cause, you will need several blood tests. So for example, an early morning testosterone is usually done between 8 to 11 a.m. because after this time, your testosterone levels actually start to drop. If it's low, they're usually repeated to confirm and they are done along with other tests such as your LH, FSH and prolactin and it actually tells us if this is due to a higher level in the brain such as if it's a pituitary problem. As we mentioned, you know, you want to check for your risk factors such as checking cholesterol, checking for your blood sugars and checking for your thyroid. So depending on the outcome, your doctor can actually treat these problems or refer you to a specialist for further tests. So if it's low testosterone, you might need a testosterone replacement therapy or even a referral to an endocrinologist. If it's a prostate problem, then you might need a referral to a urologist. If it's a heart problem, then you might need a referral to a cardiologist. So let's talk about treatment. I mean, in terms of treatment, the first thing you want to do is try and control any risk factors if they're present. So we'd advise stop smoking if you're smoking, reduce your alcohol intake if you're taking more than 40 units a week, that's gonna cause you possible erection problems in the future. So we'll talk about managing your risk of diabetes, managing your cholesterol, blood pressure, as well as trying to lose weight. If you have low testosterone, then as I said, you might need testosterone replacement therapy, otherwise known as TRT. However, do not take TRT if you do not have low testosterone, as this would not treat your erectile dysfunction, though it might boost your sex drive. I mean, TRT is good because it also reduces belly fat and it puts you at a lower risk of diabetes. Conversely, taking erectile dysfunction drugs might not work if you have low testosterone, so it is important to treat any underlying cause first. TRT does have side effects such as acne, can increase your breast size, and can also reduce the size of your testicles. But even with treating your conditions and adopting lifestyle changes, you might still need to take erectile dysfunction treatment. So let's talk about them. We have what we call phosphodiesterase inhibitors or PDE5 inhibitors. The popular ones are Viagra, as we all know, then you have Cialis, Levitra, and Speedra. These are the first line of treatment for erectile dysfunction and they block the PDE5 enzyme, which helps to increase the blood flow to the penis to cause an erection. I mean, depending on the drug, they're usually taking 15 to 60 minutes before intercourse. And they obviously would not work by themselves, so you need a bit of a, you know. Come on, a little bit of, 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 a little bit of,
There are pros and cons to each drug, and what you decide to choose depends on several factors such as the frequency of intercourse, if you're taking any other medication, and your previous experience of the drug. For example, if you are the type that has intercourse every day or three times a week, then you might want to go for a low dose Cialis of 2.5 or 5 milligrams. If you have intercourse maybe once a week or once a month, then short actin Viagra or 20 milligrams of Tadalafil might be your option. The effects of Viagra can last up to six hours, while Tadalafil, also known as Cialis, can last up to 36 hours. There are side effects common to each drug, as well as side effects specific to each drug, so you should read the leaflet before taking the drug. So for example, Viagra is known to cause visual symptoms such as blurred vision, blue colored vision, rash, dizziness, which you might not get with other drugs. But commonly, phosphodiesterase inhibitors can cause headaches, facial flushing, blocked nose and dizziness symptoms. Also, you might be on certain medications that stops you from taking these drugs. For example, if you're taking nitrate for a heart problem, then taking a medication like Viagra alongside a nitrate might cause you to have low blood pressure because nitrates work similar to Viagra in dilating the blood vessels of your organs. Also, if you've had a recent stroke, you've got unstable angina, or you've got very high blood pressure or very low blood pressure, then you should not be taking PDE5 inhibitors. I mean, whichever drug you take, whatever dose you start with, you can always increase the dose if you feel that you're not getting the effects, or if you feel that the effects are just too good, you can actually lower the dose. Also bear in mind that it can take up to eight doses to the maximum dose to get the maximum effect. So even if you tried the drug just once and it did not work, do not think, oh no, this didn't work for me. However, if you've tried several PDE5 inhibitors and they've not worked for whatever reason, then there are other options such as injections, creams, vacuum pumps, and even surgery. So for example, if you had a spinal cord injury, then you might benefit from these other options than taking tablets. So there is a drug called alprostadil, which is injected into the shaft of the penis, which relaxes the smooth muscle to allow blood flow into the penis. Alprostadil is similar to the chemical prostaglandin, which the penis naturally produces when erect. You or your missus will be taught how to inject the drug, which is done slowly, usually over five to 10 seconds, and should be done 30 minutes before intercourse. It is advised not to use this drug more than once in 24 hours, not for two days in a row, and not for more than three times a week. So side effects of this injection can include swelling, bruising, and pain around the site of the injection. You could also get painful erections of this injection and a lot of people end up going to hospital because of this painful erection. If you're not keen on injection, you've also got the option of a pellet, which is usually inserted with an applicator into the urethra. Ideally, it should be done after urination and it then dissolves to give an erection. With the pellet, you should get an erection within 10 minutes and can last for up to an hour. Unlike the injection, muse can be used twice a day and not more than seven times in a week. The side effects are milder than the injection with mostly pain in the penis. Alprostadil comes as an injection, pellet, and it also comes as a cream, which is applied into the opening at the top of the penis. This can be done five to 30 minutes before intercourse. This is used not more than three times a week, just once in 24 hours, and the effects can last one to two hours. The main side effect with cream is irritation of the skin of the penis. Now you have what we call vacuum constriction devices or a vacuum pump. So a pump is placed over the penis and air is pumped out of the cylinder, which then creates a vacuum that draws blood into the shaft of the penis. The penis now swells and becomes erect. The pump is removed and the ring or band is placed at the end of the penis to maintain the erection. This can be useful in men with anxiety, but you might have side effects such as the penis feeling cold, so you might have to warm it with a warm compress, as well as swelling, bruising, and numbness of the penis. So if you've tried other treatment options and you're looking for a more permanent option, then look no further than penile prosthesis surgery or penile implants. You have a choice of inflatable or semi-rigid implants. So for inflatable implants, they can be put in the penis, can be inflated for erection, and can be deflated afterwards. And they're quite useful if you have issues of the anatomy, such as Peyronie's disease, which as I said, is a penile curvature of the penis, which can happen as a result of fracture of the penis, for instance. However, the main downside of having implants is that they can stop you from having natural erections even after the implant has been removed. However, success rates are believed to be as high as 90% for surgery. Now, do not forget counselling. A lot of people focus on the medical treatments and forget the importance of counselling. We're talking about psychosexual counselling, which focuses on sex problems and relationships and can be done on your own or as a couple. So if you've got any physical problems, which might be causing your anxiety and depression, or you've got relationship problems such as lack of sexual desire or anything in general, then speaking to a therapist is a good option. 
So there are natural or herbal remedies or supplements that help with erectile dysfunction, but my focus is on the medical treatments for erectile dysfunction. Some remedies work, while with others, there is no strong evidence base and there are concerns regarding the safety and efficacy of these remedies. I.e., what's exactly in it? Do you know what you're taking? How do you know it's safe? I'll probably cover this in another video, but one supplement that's well known is called L-Arginine. So L-Arginine, as we know, is an amino acid and it helps with dilation of the blood vessels which means in theory, this increases blood flow to the penis to produce an erection. And some studies have shown that some men with erectile dysfunction problem had low levels of L-arginine. However, unlike medication like Viagra or Cialis, which usually works within 30 to 60 minutes, if you take L-arginine, that's not gonna work within 30 to 60 minutes. So that means you have to take this medication for a long period of time before it actually works. And it might not work in some men, especially if you might not have low levels of L-arginine or if you have a medical condition already. Also, you shouldn't take L-arginine alongside your PD-5 inhibitors because there's a risk of having low blood pressure, as well as other symptoms such as headaches or flushing. Now, I hope you found this video on erectile dysfunction useful. And if you like this video, please feel free to subscribe to my channel.